Hello everyone, so thank you for joining today. Today I'll be talking about Ask the Experts in JP. I've done a quick survey and I want to share you with you the result. But today I have a special guest, uh, Prince David 5 And I'm sure if you've been playing the game long enough, you know, Prince is one of the most you know, helpful member of the community. Uh, in the main Discord, you, you know, I'm sure that had multiple questions answered by Prince. And today he's kind enough to join us to kind of discuss the new event and new unit. So thank you, Prince, for joining. Thank you for having me, Ortega. All right, so let's move on to the actual content. So, um, as, as I said, this is about the JP survey. I'll explain what it's more about. So the section one explain what the survey, how it was conducted and what that's mean to you as a global player. And then, the, you know, then they will go into the results. Uh, the first part is about the actual True Down Quest 4 event itself, how people enjoyed it in JP and, you know, whether, whether the, they thought it was worthwhile. And then I'll move on to the actual unit discussions about how they rate their units. And then this part I'll be discussing more in detail with Prince about, you know, what his view and my views are. And hopefully we can get a collective view of upcoming events. So just uh, quickly showing the uh, timelines for uh, DQ4. Um, as you, you know, I've, I've done a few videos already on the, each of the units review. So in this video, I won't be talking about the details of each of the unit. If you want to know more about it, please refer to um, the unit guys. I'll share the link in the comments. Also, uh, I won't be talking too much about the event itself either. So it's kind of assumes that you know a little bit about units, a little bit about events. And then for the events, you know, do refer to a Marco's a farming guide because it's a useful guide. I've asked him if it's okay to advertise it here and he said it's okay. So, you know, hopefully you'll get, if you want to know more about the actual units or events, you know, to, do check out um, Marco's contents or, or my other, uh, other review videos. Well, enough of that intro. So let's move on to the actual survey. So how I was, was conducted was, you know, there, I've asked you know, people on Twitter uh, who I'm connected with, um, and then, you know, I just thought it might be quite, you know, quite good fun to do a quick survey uh, amongst the JP competitive players to let us know what they thought about True Dragon Quest 4 events. Uh, and some of them included us quite famous VTubers, so I'm pretty pleased with the, with the result on that. Um, and the questions I said I asked were about the event itself and what they thought about overall event. And then moved on to actual rating of the units and how they rate them. Um, the way I've asked him is uh, outside the obvious, you know, do you rate them? How do you rate them PvP, PvE? I also asked them, you know, how did you rate them on release the first month? And how do you rate them now? Now, the, the idea around that is to get the view on, you know, like how useful these units going to be in three months time. Because, you know, we're going to be spending all our hard, hard earned uh, gems or, uh, or cash even. You want to know like how long it's going to be usable or how, how long it's going to be good for. So I thought this might be a good feedback to get from the JP players. And that's how I've formed the questionnaire. I think this is really cool. I'm very excited. Yeah, really excited to get your opinion on all of those as well. So yeah, move on to event review. So, um, so the first question I've asked is, overall, how did you like the uh, True Dragon Quest Hero event? Um, and I asked them to rate out of five. Twelve answers, they loved it, which is good. 80% um, said it's okay or uh, above average or fine. So I think it's encouraging that over 90% has said, you know, it's kind of better than the average. So that's that's really good. But, you know, one thing that caught my eye was, uh, you know, there were some people that who said uh, I didn't like it. And there was uh, didn't nobody rated like one out of five, but, you know, two out of five. So, you know, trying to see what that kind of, you know, two out of five meant, you know, I've also asked more detailed questions. Uh, which was let me know which part of the Dragon Quest for event you actually liked or disliked about, and then ask them to rate out of five. So, um, so yeah, I'm just gonna quickly read the selection. So I've said, you know, did you enjoy the campaign? I think JP had triple rank up and tome and double goal. So, um, on the roadmap there was a guild corp that was announced. So you know, really more keen to understand from JP players how they thought about that. Um, and a large boss, the usual large boss as well. Um, I know that Balzac and Healy are expected to be uh, kind of a good farmable unit, so I kind of asked, uh, and the general special content, and the, the last part is the like, migrants kind of village mission, so this is a kind of like, you know, friend point mission is my understanding, but you know, they try to give it a different spin to make it more interesting, so I was kind of keen to understand what JP team thought. Um, so looking at that, that chart that's kind of the roughly the result average result out of five firstly the, the the what was most highly rated out of the jp guys 
was the uh, Balzac Healy farming. So, um, so I know briefly like how good these units are. But um, um, Prince, do you know how much you know? Do you have you? Oh yeah. Read about these specs of these, and uh, what do you think of these guys? How far are you going to farm these guys? They're they're both fantastic. Um, mm -hmm. I think they're going to be the best farmable since uh, Majol and Hussar from oh, really? what was it DQ really? nine. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Healy's an excellent support for an A rank. Um, really good damage booster. It's a it's for it, it's like a free version of Yeri, right? Of of Young Terry, just I mean, not quite that level, but like can fill that role. And right. Balzac just doesn't die. The dude has so much health and so much <laughs> healing. He, yeah. He's and and he does okay damage to to yeah. put in. So yeah, these 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 two are very much going to be the highlight farmables that we've had. In, in a while. Now, how far would you say you're going to be going an awakening plus or just max awakening or I tend to just stop at max awakening. Um yeah. one or two extra points in HP for Balzac might be worth mm -hmm. doing. That'd probably be about it for me. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's that's probably what I would do as well. I'll see how, you know, there's a lots of things going on as well at the same time in depending on the other campaigns that might happen. Um uh, but yeah, I think I won't be too sad of, you know, like you know, awakening plus on either of them if, if I have a spare stamina so that's kind of something that we could look forward to um the other thing i've noticed was uh this kind of a village village mission um i thought you know it looked really cool and i was quite curious as to how interesting that would be but you know a little bit disappointed that people said you know rated below average so um have you heard about this kind of event um Chris? I, have you been following i don't i don't pay as much attention to those type of things but usually that's just a grind right and so grinds yeah. don't tend to be super popular I think to me yeah. the things that stand out here is is the campaign. I think that was more related to their Annie event. Yeah. So I don't expect us to necessarily get. I know we get the gold portion because we get the new gold stage, which the oh, new the new ultra gold weekend stage. Oh yeah. yeah is yeah, yeah, yeah. is better than roadmap, is, yeah. is better than Remy Sands. It'll be the new best gold income if you're short on gold. But I don't yeah, think yeah. we'll get the rest of these campaigns. Oh, um, and and no, for me the guild. The guild boss was the thing I'm most excited for coming in. Yeah. So it's interesting to see that rated fairly lowly because that's something that I'm super excited for. Just a just a change and a break from the standard GVG. Yeah, no, I fully agree. I think there hasn't been any kind of guild kind of related event up to now. So I was quite excited about it. Um, I mean, obviously there were people who kind of enjoyed it as well, but the fact that you know the, some of the smaller guilds are kind of a little bit struggled as well. And some of the feedback I heard on the on the on the comments were that like this was a little bit too grindy, especially when it's like essentially the same thing as a large boss. So it's kind of you have you having to do the large boss, which is quite grindy, and then and at the same time you know daily mission on the guild corp was kind of a little bit of a too much. Uh, okay, yeah, yeah that's from, that's yeah. fair. I like the idea, yeah. but yeah, you just do it like the same thing fourteen times, and so once you've worked out your strategy, it's it's just yeah. a like remember to spend 10 minutes doing it every day yeah exactly so yeah but that's that's overall i think the you know the review from the guys were above average uh but just you know you know be prepared that guild corp might be you know quite a lot of work for us but you know in terms of reward it's really good so you know let's let's uh try to enjoy it as much as possible yeah the top rewards are twice what a general gvg gives and you're not you don't have luck in who you fight, right? Everybody yeah, exactly. gets a score and, and rates out. So it's not like, oh no, we fought Starfall and Arena Watch this this <laughs> month, right? Like, yeah, 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 yeah. So that there's there's a kind of a reward uh, that you get from like a progression and also the ranking. So yeah, and, and then because there are obviously less less guilds than the players, you know, I think yeah, we have a good chance of getting good rewards. So yeah, nothing to complain really. Yeah, let's let's uh, let's do our best. Yeah, let's move on to perhaps more, in, you know, probably the most exciting part of the discussion, which is the banner units and the feedback from the JP guys. So the JP players base and I asked them again um, to rate out of five uh, each of the units. And then obvious uh, in blue is the PVP rating. And then um, the, the red is the kind of the, the P PVE rating. And then um, so I, I'll start with the kind of the highest one, the obvious one as well, is that the solo um was rated in a high or above four um and in near near or nearly everybody rated five for pve um so it's kind of fair to say he's definitely uh, well rated in the jp community and i moved to the right for the amon and Saro. they kind of you know everybody rated more for a pvp 
and then you know PBE, you know they might they're kind of around average or below average for Amen as a usefulness. Um, and unfortunately, on the left hand side, people rated uh, Maya and Mina to be kind of somewhat below average, both on PVP uh, PVE. So, uh, what do you think of these uh, results, Prince? I mean, these aren't too different from what I would have expected. Solo is is obvious. Um, I I totally agree mm -hmm. there. I actually I think Mina is going to be slightly more useful than Maya. Um, yeah. Just from looking at their kits, um, and yeah. I'm actually kind of surprised at how highly rated Amon and Sorrow are for PVE. I, I mm -hmm. think they're totally in the right spot PVP wise, but I actually think they're going to be lower than that for PVE. I would I would expect Maya and Mina to be better than Amon for PVE. For yeah. For no, that's. Their kits. That's what I was expecting as well, and especially, um, you know, I, I knew Saro was, you know, because, it, you know, it's, it gets the bulk, you know, from defense, you know, some, it's usable in some PV, but I wasn't expecting expecting it to be rated better than, say, you know, like, uh, or, or, or about the same as, you know, Maya or Mina, but maybe I think this one, you know, I've asked, you know, like, when I say PV, I asked about large boss battle as well. And you know that we do, we are getting the guild 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 court battle, aren't we? So which I know Mina and Maya are going to be quite useful. So I guess that's what uh, kind of a little bit explains that. I would say. Yeah, I think the other thing might be I think Solo looks really highly rated for PvP, and maybe that's because everybody was excited and has higher awakens. But I think it similar awakens. I don't think I would I would want Solo over Amon or Sorrow. Right, right, and, right. And, and, and so I, I think that's just, you know, he's the big hype unit and, and he is going to be usable and fairly good. And if you go high awaken on him and not others, then yeah, you'll use him in PvP. But I, I think that, that that rating on his PvP might be a little skewed too high. <laughs> well, yeah, I think there's def definitely a, was a hype around Solo uh, being an anniversary unit. But I think what's a shame is that Maya, I think, you know, there was like a whole campaign around, you know, let's predict what's the next unit around you know and then as being maya there was a huge hype when there was a you know video released about her so you know it kind of it, it, it went to show that you know the first first month review of the people was like you know it went down really quickly it didn't quite live up to the hype so i thought that's a bit unfortunate given the quite interesting mechanics but yeah i think i agree with you on the the ratings of generally but that these three are the, probably the best for pvp less less so uh, of the the two sisters <clears throat> okay so i move on to um so i've asked exactly the same questions but how you know that what the previous one was how did you rate them in the initial month and then how do you rate them now so the interesting part is that the the points didn't go s that much uh lower with the solo aemon or, or sorrow only about 0.1 um so you know but you know generally understandable that you know power creep is you know is always you know yeah. exists so you know it things will go down so it didn't it didn't look at anything like you know crazy so you know i think for me that you know it, what, what it looked like is a solo aim and sorrow are kind of safe bet you know it's, it's not gonna like go power creep immediately as such uh one thing that i've noticed though like on roughly speaking on average maya especially around pvp rating drops significantly um, I don't know what impacted that, but people thought, you know, Maya, well, people didn't think Maya was great in, in PvP at all in the, in the first place, but they rated it a lot lower uh, now than three months ago. So that's kind of an interesting result. And Mina, uh, you know, it started off very low on the PV, PvP as well. So, you know, it didn't suffer the, the, you know, the lowering as much as Maya, but I think also, you know, it's fair to say kind of both are kind of rated quite low on pvp as it's hardly seen on the pb meta in jp i mean of course you know we the, the meta might be very different so you know we'll, we'll find out how how useful they will be but i think that general expectation based on that result is that you know they might not we know they might not see much use uh moving forward um any additional comments on that prince no i i don't really expect my amina to be particularly big pvp players Mm -hmm. Maya's got some utility potentially as a fast unit that can stun, which can be a good yeah. Zamon counter. But for for the yeah. weight and the fact that to like to do her big damage, she has to take an entire turn off. Yeah. Right? The same thing for Mina. Like those those mechanics, you can get away with in PVE that just don't work as well in PVP. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Amon, no, I, I fully agree. Yeah. The, right, he has a lot of the same attributes as Zenlon. Right, they're both sixty five weight. They're about the same speed. They both yeah. hit big AOEs with two elements. Um, yeah. unresisted spell is basically the same as a breath 
So mm -hmm. I feel like they're going to have a lot of similar utilities. Zenlon can boost other dragons, and Amon boosting other demons doesn't have quite the same impact. But mm -hmm. right now the meta the meta is Zenlon without other dragons, where Amon could basically be just a different element variation. Just on her, that. yeah. No, I fully agree. Yeah, it will be quite interesting to see how how our Amon plays out over here with probably less kind of uh, whale whale like kind of players in, in JP. I think. I heard that all the legend players are like max awakening on everything or something crazy like that. So, so maybe Eamon might be rated better over here. I don't know, but I'm quite curious to see how, how these three kind of plays out in the MP meta. Okay. So, and I'm, I'm going to move on to, uh, some feedback comments that, um, that I got. So there, they were really, really good at corroborate, you know, cooperative. So we really appreciate the JP players helping us on that. Um, I'm not going to read out all of them. Um, actually, there's uh, tons more uh, of feedback, actually. But I picked out a few comments, and uh, I'm going to pick out a few things that kind of caught my eye. So I think Maya, so the downside is that, you know, it takes one turn to transform, and the confusion being the weakness is a severe problem, that said, somebody said, which I agree. Um, on the Mina side, people said that, you know, Mina has a potential because of that quite unique kit. Those follow-ups, yeah. Yeah, the follow-ups and, you know, like the you know, debuff, com you know, confirm debuffs and things like that. So it's it's a combination has a, you know, potential in a large case battle and large boss battle, which which kind of makes sense. And I thought it's a good point. Um, but a lot of people thought, you know, neither of these units are mandatory. So uh, that's kind of the overall view. The sisters kind of remind me of, of the Lucia, the evil Mal Malumin uh, yes. Maluminary and, 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 Lu and Lucia, right? Like they're, they, they were both fairly highly rated right away. They remain niche and useful for a lot of things for players that don't have other units but if you have everything top end whales aren't using those units anymore right like they yeah. just they do too many things okay and not enough yeah. things amazing i think that's generally tends to be the thing with the dragon quest tactics that i mean there are some exceptions right like young terry doing you know like if you're specialized in one thing tends to be a kind of better unit in my opinion like i don't know that i just when when unit tries to do too many things it just sounds out mediocre and everything and that's just kind of quite common i see in an attack in my opinion anyway um yeah so that's what maya and mina's kind of feedbacks were um and solo pretty much needed a whole page to be honest and and perhaps more because um yeah it's basically everybody wanted to talk about solo and uh yeah everybody said that it's totally busted um but i think everybody said com the common point was that you know, everybody thought that buff removal skill, Tenku no Kengeki in Japanese, uh, was absolutely, you know, totally busted. And I like this comment that I want to read out, which says, with his re -implement with this implementation of this skill, all the existing high difficulties are things of the past. I love the way they phrased it. And no, no matter how strong the enemy is, you can remove the buffs and it will be, it'll be fine. <laughs> you know, it's like long it is and, and the, you know, change, such a ch change shift to the PvE uh, meta. Um, yeah, and then others said, like, you know, Mahost is really great, but, um, you know, also people said, this is a, you know, great investment. If you go full in, you won't regret it. Everybody w wants to praise about it. So, yeah, I think it's reflective of what we said, right, Vince? Oh, yeah. he's. I mean, he's amazing. I I, I do a lot of high-end Blossom Door, and he's going to yeah. just take over oh, just every yeah, floor. Yeah, I'm looking forward to right? that. Like, Definitely. I used, I used Erdrick on, like, three floors of the new 10. Solo, yeah. you can put in, the, like, eight or nine of them. Pretty much. Like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it, just I, that that buff also, removal it doesn't doesn't matter what he's weak to it doesn't matter what elements he's using it's just going to yeah. take bosses out of dangerous territory of dangerous. yeah absolutely and uh, i think also the other thing i'm looking forward to is like they really would shorten the the turns it would take to kill them so you know at least from what i've seen on the uh japanese strategy guide so you know i'm really looking forward to you know the monthly gr grind on blossom door so really looking forward to that He's going to be big, big big, for PvE, and, and he'll be okay in PvP. And being able to yeah. remove all those buffs of things like like Sorrow, right? Like, who's going to get yeah. a huge agility and attack boost and a couple other boosts? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you so, yeah, can I, survive I, I, his initial I, I, hit, like, Solo's going to take that buff away, and then Sorrow will be slow turn two, right? Like, he... That buff removal is big. Yeah. Right? Zoma, I mean, was, actually, Zoma was the... The top bloom unit for a long time <laughs> primarily because that was unique yeah there was a frigid wave right so yeah. i mean what what do you think of um what do you think of um actually that's a good point so the thing i was thinking about you know the pvp was like maybe we could remove you know you could use solo and then 
other DPS unit to in order that you know like you know solo can remove uh, cover and then like rest can come in to, to do the attack is that kind of a would you say that's kind of applicable in the PvP because then I thought that would be really strong if that's a it's a possible kind of you know combo I was thinking but I, what do you think I don't think combo? solo is going to be that strong in RTA just because the uh -huh. meta right now is blitz and solo is just uh -huh. not that fast faster like turn three turn four well, um, on his turn yeah. one, but he not for the initial turn order, right? Like, yeah, exactly. high end whales right now are running everybody at seven hundred plus agility, and Solo is just not going to get there, and so there, te yeah. teams will kill him off before he gets to go. But it's on things like GVG, play, yeah. where yeah. you can tactically approach things, Solo is going to absolutely prevent buffs from being a, a strategy that works well. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, no. Um, so yeah, the final part is the Amon and the Saro. So looking at the Amon comments, um, I would say Amon had a kind of most kind of split view. Some people really loved it, and some people said like perhaps you know uh, you know it was it wasn't as high as expected. So just picking out a few comments, you know, somebody said like, oh, the, it's kind of typical character that gets hyped at the beginning, but and you know at, only at the time of the release, and it soon dies. And I can you know think of kind of few that 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 was like like that like Gildegar or you know I don't know Halloween Bellonica you know people thought wow this is just totally broken and then a month later nobody's talking about like them so it, it you know I, I it kind of resonated with me but I think that's kind of a little bit too harsh in my opinion I think he's he's a, he's a bit better than you know one one month's kind of only last one month I think some people kind of quite rightfully said that he's very strong in in a GVG, it's a kind of hard one to, I think I would imagine that it's going to be a hard one to do, you know, perfect score on because... Yeah, because I, I see sheer... him in some of the ways of some former units like Eric or Sagittar where it, it, he's going to be really strong at Awaken 5. Yeah. Um, as, unless, I, unless the translations are wrong on the database, I think his main move isn't bounceable. So I... No, no, I'm, yeah, I'm, you're right. And and if he can get up to seven mid 700 agility and at max awaken he's not one shotable anymore and then so yeah. the heal becomes similar to zen's barrier and i think at max awaken he's gonna people that go for that have him for a while um yeah. i think that awaken ones maybe even threes might fade yeah. like other units have tended to yeah no i tend to agree with that really i think i think you know he's uh yeah you, I, I think you're right about the uh, his main uh, skill being non-reflectable, but I think you know. I think the one thing to note is that you know he's he still can be uh, ign like um, ignored by my host a lot of uh, solo. So yeah, we'll, we'll see how good. But I th I just feel like you know he's kind of Zen equivalent, but you know it's just that because he's a ma you know magic DPS and there's so many you know um, counter to magic in the game. I just feel like you know he doesn't. He's not going to be your Zen uh, version too. Is my my kind of view, but. What do you think on that? In some ways, I think he's just as good, and different elements will be a nice change, but actually those elements probably aren't quite as good paired together, and mm -hmm. ba the barrier is a safer thing than the heal, and so I think he's going to be just just a step below Zen, yeah. right? And, and being later than Zen and a step below Zen, he's definitely yeah. a good option to have. And yeah. God, if you ran the two together at Awaken 5 in the mid 700 agilities you're just gonna roast things before they can move um <laughs> yeah yeah but, but yeah it's definitely one of the interesting units that i'm looking forward to see it playing on rta as well yeah for sure okay and then the sorrow month layer was a little you know a lot lot less kind of um it was consistent i would say uh in terms of response people were impressed with the agility start start the buff that it starts with um and then somebody said like rose guardian uh, was like going to be and it's already in meta but you know it's going to gain what popularity over forest dragon which i thought was quite an interesting comment because of the bang resistance um and then yeah people thought you know he's almost like a must have and it's kind of how how busted it is uh in a blitz team it's, it's almost like you need to have him you know to form a blitz team so yeah what do you think of that i, I think that's kind of fair comment my personally um yeah, as far as I can tell, his damage is nuts. He gets, like, multiple damage <laughs> boosts and the attack boost. And then with the agility, he is as as fast as basically anything out there. Yeah. And, and he pulls, which for Blitz, like, a lot of times That's I crazy, like to run Blitz. Yeah. And my issue with Blitz can be that my units block each other and can't reach yeah. the back corners with, like, multiple uh, yeah, units. Enough point, to, like, I can't, 
I can't always cleave down the corners because yeah. not everybody can hit the same spots. And that big yeah. pull, easy enough to make him my fastest unit, big pull everything in and then just roast it. And you know what? The only way to counter that is is, is going to be Rose Guardian, right? Because then the pull doesn't yeah. apply. Yeah. Or it'll just pull him and then everything else is still all the way back. So yeah, yeah. he's going to... I have Awaken 3. He's immediately going to be the leader of my... <laughs> RTA team, no question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm definitely looking forward to uh, using him as well. I, I was quite fortunate enough to off banner him. Um, uh, f uh, well, for awakening, and uh, I can use fragments. So really looking forward to him. I mean, he's my own, only hope at the moment with the, some my recent banner luck. But uh, yeah, really looking forward to using him. And and uh, you know, some people are probably less so because they have to face in RTA. But we'll find out soon. I think the other person that might be notable coming back will be Duel. I think we're gonna start seeing oh, more yes. Duel. Because yeah. Duel is both a great Sauron Manslayer counter and an excellent solo counter. That's a really good point. I I did mention in my video as well, but uh, there are you know it's very hard to find the weaknesses of solo. But if anything, that there's two things. That's that it's all physical attack. So you know um, the wild card is 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 a good counter. But also um, one thing to know about solo is that he has to hit the enemy in order to remove buffs. So, you know, he will struggle with uh, like so Duel and, you know, given he's resisting Zap as well, you know, yep. I said, you know, Duel, Duel will be um, a really, a, a once again, shy. I mean, he's he's always been good, but, you know, obviously there's been a lot of counters like, you know, Grano and a good like Frizz attacks. Um, yes, I mean, cetera, Sorrow's cetera. been a common one, right? Like, uh, yeah. man, uh, Bane's Oh, yeah, yeah, 100%. Bane, yeah, and, yeah, yeah, as, Crimson as Card, Sorrow, yeah. Manslayer, and Solo starts to take over, we'll see less Bane Swords, and, and duels will have um, more opportunity to shine with that Zap resist yeah. and being uh, full of aid. I fully agree, yeah. Yeah, I think I think it's going to be quite interesting met, you know, meta moving forward. You know, there's like, you know, because obviously there's like, you know, Sorrow the Manslayer probably counters the human sorrow into some degree and so does uh, uh you know solo but you know also there's a kind of a you know the solo would be trying to remove buff or you know it's just like the, this whole mix is going to be quite interesting and in how how it pans out so I'm really looking forward to the RTA for the next month or so cool so I think that's kind of really overview of the the feedback from the JP guys so that's really good and then like i want to close the uh the session about talking about a tier discussion so um so what i've done in the my previous video as you'll see is that i've I rated all the banner units in the in the box uh where i rated them by awakening one and awakening five and i, I you know i rated them in the four four different tiers top tier or you know meh and then like i, I rated them in each of these boxes so you know i'm kind of keen to get uh, prince's view because this is just my obviously preview of what i thought you know looking at the kit and what i'm hearing from it but you know if you if you had any different thoughts on, on these kind of things uh prince would you mind if you elaborate elaborate what you think of this i think my biggest difference is going to be sorrow manslayer i think at awaken okay. one he's great oh yeah 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 no he, he, i, I he think is, he's really tanky mm -hmm. even at awaken one he can survive a double brilliant awaken five zenlon breath um oh, wow yeah so he's be... he's tough to take down. He, even at Awaken One, he's going to be reasonably fast and hit like a truck. Um, yeah. Obviously, he's going to be top tier at Awaken Five, but I think even at Awaken One, he's great. At, at Awaken One, I maybe would move Mina up to great. I she just does a lot of utility things for the type of free to play player that doesn't mm -hmm. get that many units. She's mm -hmm. she could fill a number of of gaps on a variety of PVE things not right not I, I don't pvp i don't think either of the the sisters are going to be big players mm -hmm. um but i, I think those are no, the two i i would disagree with at awaken one at awaken five yeah um i pretty I mean, much I, I pretty much agree with what you have there on awaken five great yeah so i think yeah that, thanks for that because i i've you know the way i rated it is pretty much like just my viewpoint that you know like what i was thinking was like you know, if I were going to use Sarah the Man Slayer at Awakening One, you know, I might have a better, by you know, given given a, a, like near you know a day one player, you know, I've got like a I might have a better you know Awakening Five option. That's why I put it as a meh or on a on a bottom tier for the Sorrow and the Mina. But I think you're absolutely right. If you're you know you know you you as the kind of the, the most helpful in the community, you know, looking at the kind of the more the newer players, which I think is really great. 
and I would say I, I would I would tend to agree like Mina having like all kind of you know basically she she does everything right she does buff debuff and you know the heal so you know it's it's a great unit to have at Awakening one for various contents um so yeah I th I would say you know maybe I would, I would agree to move up to great for for newer players and same with Osaro I mean I I didn't know that you know they could tank the Aurora Breath even at Awakening one but you know I definitely do like to see how how that pans out for um uh, in the rta meta but uh yeah no it's really good good review to thanks for the thanks for the giving and sharing your your input on that um yeah. and thank you for collecting all of that from the jp i think that was really cool <laughs> to see there's lots of review videos on 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 units and, and they're they're all reasonably well done but i think that's kind of an interesting insight that we haven't had before yeah no thank you no i, I appreciate i think you know it was quite good fun to be able to talk to you for the first time and uh you know talk about this because I, I i love just you know reading ahead of time and like you know understanding the unit so that i can make best invest in the gem and but you know definitely like always always kind of happy to kind of talk to people about you know what they think of the unit so yeah really good good to get your perspective as well and uh, thank you much once again for joining um uh, despite our d difference in the time the time zones etc so I, i'm glad it's worked out finally so yeah. yeah look forward to um invite you again for another video so um that concludes my video any any final thoughts from you Prince. Thank you very much for, for uh, you know, making content for the community. It's always appreciated. Yeah. Thank you so much. And uh, yeah, please like and subscribe if you found this useful and uh, hope to see you soon. All right. Thank you very much. Thanks, Prince. Bye, guys.